Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. You know, before we get to the monologue, we actually intercepted mm. some celebrity Valentine's Day cards, and we thought we'd share them with you. First up, dear Valentine, if you really loved me, you'd buy one of my awful books. <laughs> Love, Brian Kilmeade. Aww. Happy Valentine to the best brother ever. Love, Ilhan Omar. Oh my gosh. Happy Valentine's. I'd kiss you if my face could move. Love, Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> Happy Valentine, Joe, but I'm not your sister. Love, Jill Biden. <laughs> and Happy Valentine, blur fimp. Love, Joe Biden. <laughs> All right. Oh, thank you. Courtesy laugh. Feel like I'm at a golf match. All right, to the monologue. So on this Valentine's Day, I'm afraid I have to break some bad news about our president. America, he's just not that into you. Because as Joe continues to neglect this relationship of ours, we're seeing the results of his terrible presidency. Unchecked illegal migration, crime running rampant, inflation off the hook. The chances of World War III are growing faster than a stain on Joe's pants. And yet the news coming from our government is a kaleidoscope of catastrophes, which Biden and the media are still trying to frame as progress. For the past week, we've been led to believe it's Biden's age that's the issue. But is it really? There are plenty of old dudes doing fine all over, like Steve Ducey <laughs> and Peter Ducey. <laughs> so it's not just Joe's age that's the root of the country's problems, it's neglect of our basic systems. Let's take the border. Hell, everybody else does. On Tuesday, the House voted to impeach Alejandro Mayorkas over his handling of the migrant crisis. But that's more overdue than that book I stole from the library. <laughs> it's for height people. <laughs> now, it's the first time they've impeached a cabinet secretary since 1876. That was back when Joe was in diapers. Or rather, back when he started wearing diapers. Of course, Joe criticized the vote, saying history will not look kindly on House Republicans for their blatant act of unconstitutional partisanship. He called it unconstitutional after having a long conversation with Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> She's dead, just so you know. Now, the Democrat-controlled Senate will likely dismiss the charges, but the issue isn't going away, and neither are 10 million illegal immigrants, especially since Joe Biden's job growth numbers are likely built on illegals. According to the Center of Immigration Studies, all employment growth has gone to immigrants compared to 2019. In other words, maybe they are taking our jobs. No joke, here's the latest promo for Fox and Friends. <laughs> <clears throat> wow, they have more tattoos than Ainsley. And wait till you hear stories like this one out of Boston where virtuous souls are taking the migrants into their own homes and turning them into slave labor. One woman took in a Haitian woman and even boasted that it's like having her own personal chef. Yeah, when Dems say build back better, guess they mean with indentured servants. I just hope that doesn't give any ideas to America's cotton industry. <laughs> Little cotton joke. So yeah, migrants, they're the pets that walk themselves. But maybe she's on to something. Maybe I can get my own personal masseuse. You know, the one I had before just left. And thankfully, I'm being ruled out as a suspect in his disappearance <laughs> so far. So we keep being told things are great. You know, it's like we're Madonna and we just asked our assistant how the plastic surgery looks. But it's anything but great. You want cause and effect? If the cause is uncontrolled immigration, Here's the effects. Denver's slashing all city services to pay for the migrants, including its police and health departments. 911 now requires reservations. New York City cuts services across the board, including potentially canceling the next four police academy classes. And I love those movies. <laughs> New York State is spending twice as much on services for each migrant than on homeless vets. Chicago homeless shelters are so overrun, migrants have been sleeping in police stations, city buses, and airport terminals at O'Hare. They live there with no ID or vetting. Yeah, but make sure you don't have a four-ounce bottle of shampoo. And in Cali, Newsom extended government-run health care to all illegals, 
while legal Californians face growing waits for medical services as the state projects a $68 billion deficit. If that sentence were any more backwards, it would read, hot is Greg. I don't like you people. <laughs> and how have many of these illegals been repaying us? They've attacked cops in Times Square, which is yet another job Americans already do. They shot at tourists and cops right outside this very studio as we were leaving. You know, thank God my assistant shielded me from the bullets. Well, that's one less job review. <laughs> now they run shoplifting, chain snatching, and organized crime gangs, riding mopeds, literally dragging women through the streets. And it was a stolen moped, which means there's now one virgin who can't get to the library. <laughs> they started human trafficking rings that brand women behind their ears. Suddenly, as, once, as Trump once said to great outrage, they aren't sending their best. He was right, because that includes a major Venezuelan prison gang. True, Venezuelan President Maduro's a commie thug who hates us, emptied out his prisons and sent his bad guys here, and he's not taking them back. Seems like a solvable problem. Why not put him in sacks marked foreign aid and send him to Ukraine? Of course, the New York Times recently ran a piece trying to highlight how Republicans are the problem. Right. So illegal immigration is good, but it's still the fault of evil Republicans that we can't stop it. You know, it's funny, all these idiots telling us to tighten the border now are the same people who told us there was no border problem just months ago. Hmm, I wonder what changed. Well, an election's coming up and Joe looks like <laughs> But also we've learned once again that the whole is always greater than the sum of its parts. For example, a pair of glasses and hair extensions on their own would have no value but put it together and you can make a career. <laughs> <laughs> but also an unfettered migrant crisis, plus rising crime, plus a depletion of resources, equals America at its breaking point. Hell, even a drunk woman could do the math. <laughs> Wake up, people. Let's welcome tonight's guest. I bet he's glad he's not the governor, former Congressman Lee Zeldin. We told her to keep all her answers to under an hour. Host of the Fox True Crime Podcast, Emily Campagno. He picked up his Valentine from high school today, comedian Jim Florentine. And for Valentine's Day, she got an ankle bracelet. From the police. New York Times best-selling <laughs> author and Fox News contributor, Cat Tube. <laughs> you know, it, it, Lee, the defense is so pathetic of Mayorkas that they say, they'll say a poor job performance isn't a criteria for impeachment. So they're even saying he sucks, <laughs> but you still can't impeach him. How did, it, how did he get so far and why do they not care? Mm. I think for the Biden administration, for the Democrats, Mayorkas is actually doing his job. Mm -hmm. it, it was with the directive of the White House that they got rid of Title 42 without a replacement, that they got rid of the Remain in Mexico policy. They stopped construction of the border wall, started attacking the Customs and Border Patrol agents. They end up ramping up catch and release. This was all by design. Now, the rest of us who have a problem mm -hmm. with the millions of people coming into the country during the Biden administration, we're saying uh, that this is, a, a, you know, this is unconstitutional, that you are not following the laws and the rules and the Constitution. You're not protecting the people. But getting back to your question, I think that Mayorkas, by design, in the Biden administration's mind, he's actually doing his job. Yeah, and I guess if that's counting for, uh, against the job numbers... That's a win-win for them. I just came up with that. <laughs> I have a stutter. And looking for votes? Yeah. Emily, um, the Dems are, and the media are calling this impeachment political. Isn't that interesting? When is it not political? I mean, they impeached Trump twice poli for political reasons. And the, the irony to me is that this is this actually a, a tool that Congress can use upon realizing or determining that someone has abdicated their duty. And so for, for the president to call it political, the whole point is the tool is baked into 
the fabric of our country, right? The whole point is this the checks and balance against someone who has totally, utterly failed at their job. But keep in mind, this is the same president that called the Her report um, a smear hack, a, a political smear job. So obviously this guy has a problem with the truth. Can I focus for for a moment just on what you said in the intro about California? Because no. I, oh, please. Okay. I'm, just a quick second. Yeah. Because I'm deathly afraid of the inevitable Gavin Newsom machine that's going to replace mm -hmm. the Crypt Keeper. Yeah. And I want us all to be to understand what that looks like. So California is facing a $68 billion deficit. That's what you said. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind that their largest expenditure is health and human services. Mm -hmm. That's almost a billion dollars. Under that, what do you think falls under that? The Medicare mm -hmm. and all of the, the what they're now extending to illegal immigrants. Mm -hmm. And you contrast that, only three, only 15% of Californians can afford homes. Three million Californians cannot afford the internet. Mm -hmm. And yet we have someone at the helm there who tells us it's about care, not cash. Mm -hmm. And it's about amplifying and lifting up black and brown people who are the ones being totally pushed out of that Medicare mm -hmm. system in the state of California. The ass backwards existence of that state and it being deteriorated into the deteriorated into the toxic cesspool that it is, is because of him. Mm. So we all have to watch out. Lock I like doors. It. I like it when you do this, Me Emily, because you get to see your triceps. <laughs> <laughs> you've been doing a, you've been doing some very good tri <laughs> dips. You've been doing dips. No? I mean, should I move well, on? Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, move on. Jim, <laughs> you are. Some say you're a very giving person. Would you be willing to take some migrants into your um, house, your spacious house? No. <laughs> I don't even like if I uh, have people over for dinner and they stay for dessert too long, I want them out. It's true. It is awkward to have strangers in your house and they can't speak English. I just had a Super Bowl party and after the game, people were just still hanging out. I'm like, go. Yeah. Let, it's and over. The, Let's move on. And those were your kids. <laughs> <laughs> This is my home, Jim. No, but what Emily was saying about California, like, I think if you're a California resident, it's probably easier if you sneak into Mexico, change your name, then come back over as a legal immigrant, you'll get a better job and you get free health care. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. If you have, a, like, an expensive surgery, you can't, oh, no, if you want to change your gender, you can just go into the border, come out, and then you can get it for free. Have you thought about that? I have, but um, yeah. I'm only going to do a once change my gender. So yeah. I'm trying to get a, a, a special on Netflix, a comedy special. Mm -hmm. So as a white male, the only chance I got is if I change my gender. Yeah. So I'm going to wait for that. Yeah, that's a good thing. I was going to say, if you ever get arrested and you know you're going to jail, then change your gender. Then I change my gender. Exactly. Then I can have some fun in jail. Exactly. <laughs> I don't have to fend off a bunch of guys. Yes, exactly. All right, Kat. Uh, what, what do you... Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't have a question That's for you. That's what you're going with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think here about the impeachment thing? I guess my question is, you know, they've been doing, the Dems have been doing it, and maybe it's like time to bring a gun to a gunfight, you know? I, I just, I, I couldn't agree more with the political thing, because it's, it, it's, it is politics, right? But when you, for example, the, Biden was also saying that the bill, they didn't pass this bill. If this was really that big of an issue, they wouldn't have shoved all this other stuff like Ukraine funding into the right. bill. That was a political move. Right. And to me, it's always a good thing when they don't just like push a bill through that no one's really gotten a chance to read or consider yet. Mm -hmm. I think that that's always a good thing to accuse other people of playing politics when you're playing politics. It, I, everybody knows it, too. Nobody's yeah. like, you know what? The Repub they're, they're, they're playing politics with this country. Like every, Everybody, we all know that this is what's going on. Everyone's exhausted by it. And the whole like... History will gloss over. I think history is going to gloss over this. Yeah. Okay, like there's a lot of other shit going on right now. Maybe like an extra credit question, but it's like nobody says, okay, now what? Everybody likes to take the time to say, oh, they did this, they did this. They now what are we going to do? Because if you haven't noticed, there's a bit of a situation going on. Do you know that you made me think that I should be reading history books that are out that talk about the 2000s? Because I haven't. And that's the stuff I would remember. I wonder what they do cover. Yeah. You know, like what do kids learn about like the Iraq war? What do they learn? Like, what do they do? like? I, there could be things that we think are extremely important that are completely glossed over. Right. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. No like, one's going to care about this in 10 years, this impeachment. It's not going to go through. Exactly. He's not going to get convicted. Yeah. You know, they'll, they, they'll be talking about how many times they showed Taylor Swift during a Super Bowl. Yeah. In 10 years. It was 58 times. Yeah, exactly. And I loved her little friend, Little Orphan Annie.
Let's just add, you know, by the way, that, that Ukraine bill actually had more money for Ukraine's border than our own border. Yeah. Yeah. And one yeah. thing for this entire Biden administration, he showed that he had the power to open the border. Right. So this whole thing that Congress needs to give him a power in order to close it is we all know that you have the power right now. You proved it by using those powers to open it in the first place. Yeah. You're assuming he still knows he's president. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else. Hey, you're done. What's it for, man? I'll go on it. a lie. Oh, toujours, ou crazy? Ah, m'oblige, parce que y'a même v'le passe tout le temps. Ou c'est plus belle femme que y'a l'moué, ou c'est pas bon pour j'a l'moué. Vili vi ou c'est mon nain pour y'a n'en vol moué. Avant que fait tout le vie, moué, de pousser la crème que moué. Avec tout la vie, moué, pas rien fait. Ou c'est plus belle femme que y'a l'moué, ou c'est pas bon pour j'a l'moué. Vili vi ou c'est mon nain pour y'a n'en vol moué. Avant que fait tout le vie, moué, de pousser la crème que moué. Yeah. 